Hi guys, I am here with Bob Nana. Woo! Hello. Uh, how's the tour going? The tour has been fantastic. We've been having a great time. We're almost to the end, maybe two thirds of the way through. Five more shows left, and then sadly it's over. Yeah. We'll have to come back. Is it kind of um, bittersweet when you finish a tour? Yes, very much so. It's like, uh, you know, finally I can go home, but then seriously, you know, you, you know that after being home for two or three days, you want to get back out on the road, <laughs> especially. Um, so, yeah, especially a short tour like this, you know, you get in the groove of things, and by the time you're really in the tour groove, it's over. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just before we started, you said that you'd actually played here in the Star and Guard before. I did, and I have pictures to prove it. Yeah, uh, it was February 19th. I just looked it up. I don't, I just, I don't always have that memorized. No, February 19th, so, you know, almost to the day, uh, yeah. in 1998. It was Braid, Get Up Kids, in a band called Spy vs. Spy. Played uh, upstairs. That's and so I have cool. a photo of the crowd. Yeah, that's so cool. You kind of have, like, uh, a long career in the music industry. Um, in that time, you've kind of lived through the biggest change that the music industry has kind of seen since it's, I mean, since it began, really. Yeah. Um, how, how has it changed for you? Well, it's, what's good about it changing, it always keeps you on your toes. It's not like you can, you know, maybe in pre-1995 or something, being in a band meant one certain thing. It meant... Uh, especially a band that wanted to be like successful, aka like if you were wanted to tour and play to play a bunch of places and play with a lot of bands, it meant you needed to get signed to a label. You needed X amount of money from the label. You needed X amount of money to record your record. You know, like I, I don't know. There was just this system in place that had lasted for the for the previous whatever 30, 40 years that everyone was just settled into. Hmm. By the time I started um, getting into playing music, it was 94, 95, and that was like pretty much right about the time the internet kind of hit, at least, you know, where where I was from, mm. where people were, you know, booking tours for, for uh, via email and setting up their own websites, and so it was cool to not only learn how to be in a small-time DIY touring band, but mm. learning how to use this this brand new technology to help DIY, do yeah. it ourselves, D-O-I, yeah, yeah. do, do it ourselves. Because like, you know, it was just, I, I love that the change, the constant change that happen, that's happening and then it's still happening right now. Mm -hmm. So every, you know, every time I get, you know, now it's so easy for like me or anyone to record music at their home on their laptops or whatever the you know, the technology is, is, is amazing and it's really been brought down to a level that many more people can get involved in, um, you know, the creative process and the, the, the publishing of it too, like putting it out there. So yeah. I love it. It's, it's, it's been a constant change and I wouldn't want it any other way. Mm. I don't like getting set in ways. That's great. Yeah. I read a, a really good article the other day. It said, in the UK anyway, that the, the live music industry is kind of, while record sales are still falling, the live music industry is booming. Like mm. Sales were up 20% last year. Cool. Now it's kind of boring and businessy, but um, have you kind of noticed that? Like, Do you think the, the live scene really is kind of making a, a comeback, if you want to say that, or really is... I don't know. I, I, that's tough to say. I, I guess I haven't, I haven't really seen evidence of that but then again I'm not probably the, the right person to ask about mm -hmm. that I mean I sort of take care of my own business yeah. um, I certainly do play a lot of shows but I've always played a lot of shows yeah. even back in the day we knew that if we wanted to be a sustainable band we had to go out and play shows and be, and be on tour because it's not like we were going to sell enough records to be able to you know pay our rent or anything mm -hmm. so yeah um I suppose that's a good thing because it it will get bands out on stage to play and where you know that's where like the craft gets honed you know playing in front of people and playing live is is always been my favorite part of uh being a musician I, I you know recording is like okay but I love getting on, on stage and playing so if that is the case then I'm psyched about it yeah cool you have 
been in quite you've had quite a few different musical projects. Mm-hmm. Um, most successful probably being Braid and Hey Mercedes. Um, how difficult or how easy is it to kind of make it fresh each time, make it different each time? Um, yeah, and, and do you access like different emotions or do you draw on different influences? Different emotions, no, not really, but different influences, yeah, definitely. I mean, I always try and keep up with, um, you know, bands, like newer bands and what, what like newer bands are doing and getting inspired by what I see or what I hear. Um, so keeping it fresh isn't like a front of mind concern when I'm starting a new record or, or something. Mm. It's just things that excite me at the time. Right. Um, yeah, and so, yeah, I mean... As long as I stay up to date with stuff, I won't, you know, fall into any sort of rut. At least that's my hope. <laughs> How do you decide what goes into where? Like, do you kind of hold songs back for a specific project, or is it just kind of what you're working on at the time? That's what goes in. Pretty much. I mean, Braid. Uh, well, Hey Mercedes isn't a band anymore. Um, Braid. I like to write songs. Normally, normally the songs I write. For City on Film, I specifically write for City on Film. Uh, the and to be honest, they're ones that I feel like I'd be able to play so by myself too, you know, on the stage. Mm. When I write something that feels like it could use some collaboration, could use some more input or more music, like that, then that's something that would I would save to play with Braid. Yeah. But you know, it, you know, it's always you know loose because sometimes. If I know that I'm not going to get together with those guys for a while to practice, which you know happens because we live in different cities, then I might just use what I write for City on Film or whatever is, mm. is going on at that moment. Cool. Um, the kind of emo scene, emo revival scene is going through something of a resurrection at the minute, if you want to call it that. I mean, we've got bands like Braid, Mineral. Um, kind of all coming back around yeah. um, and people like Koji who you're playing with tonight are kind of like the third wave maybe of like emo artists coming through. I get confused through. by all the waves. I know yeah <laughs> well it's kind of another generation of sure, people who sense, yeah. probably grew up being inspired by your music. How does that feel to kind of be on tour with someone like that? It, it feels incredible. I mean it feels incredible to be able to still be touring right now like I said I was here in 1998 Mm -hmm. and I'm back in 2015 like I don't know if you if you would have told me that in 1998 that I'd be back here playing in 2015 like solo after I put us like I don't know if I would have believed you I I just I guess I never really thought about the future back then but uh I I love it I, I love the fact that people can get out there and maybe be inspired by some of the records or, or, or music I've done or people that play were playing around that time have done. It's totally cool. But, like, I don't let it get to me too much. What, what, what I take from it is, wow, if people are way into that music now, that means I can still go out and play shows and make records. Mm. And people will be interested to hear it. Cool. Uh, so what's next? Well, a lot. Um, so... The City on Film record came out in December. Mm-hmm. Braid has a 7-inch coming out for Record Store Day. I'm not supposed to. I don't know if this... <laughs> well, we, have, we got a 7-inch that we, we recorded these two songs when we recorded No Coast and saved them specifically for this. So um, that's happening. When I get back to uh, the States in March, I'm, I'm doing South by Southwest. I play in a band called Lifted Bells that will be playing South by Southwest, and we, we're going to be announcing something pretty pretty cool too um so city on film and lifted bells are playing south by southwest in austin after that i'm doing a full band city on film tour in the u.s opening for this band kind of like spitting that are just old old friends of mine that's going to be pretty exciting um i'm currently trying to play every state in the u.s so i have three more to play north dakota wyoming and alaska and so I have a North Dakota show set up uh, in April, so I'm going to do that. So any Alaska or Wyoming bookers, come on, get on it. I, I, I'll play anything. Barnes, uh, <laughs> Nobles. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, 
So, uh, uh, and then in uh, May and June, Braid is probably going to go to Japan oh, nice. and Australia, maybe. And then uh, August, Braid's going to do some shows. And at some point, I'm going to be recording a record with my wife. We have a project called Jack and Ace that we both contribute to. Um, so that's something we're going to be focusing on this year as well. Nice. Yeah. Sounds, sounds exciting. I can't sit still. <laughs> like well, literally good, and like in life. That's good. It's yeah. a good way to be. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> well, I can never relax. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much for yeah. having me. Cool. All right. Sweet. Cheers. That was great.